everybody. Welcome to church. We got about five minutes before the service starts, so here are some church appropriate dance moves you can do whenever the spirit moves you. So get on up and let's sweat to some scriptures. Or maybe not. Or just, just let's go. Here we go. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Shirts on the face. See it on the face. Yeah. Bring it together. Here we go. Let it go. You take the stone. You let it go. You're unhindered by armor. Let that elbow sway. Elbow, 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 elbow. Okay. One of my personal favorites. Resurrection. You gotta get down to get back. Yeah. Keep working, guys. Keep working. You're doing great. I'm doing great. I'm getting a little tired. Crush the, crush the, get crush the, crush the. We gotta stomp hard, stomp hard, stomp hard. You're crushing it, crushing it, crushing it. Yeah. 
Fresh Start Kids, it's Miss Morgan here. This month, I've been making a lot of messes. This week, I'm using a new material to tackle. And I'm using, are you ready for it? Give me a drum roll. Duct tape. Just look at all this duct tape that I have. And you know what my favorite part about duct tape is that it's so mysterious. How can something be so strong and so sticky at the same time? And the uses for it are endless. Endless. Ooh. And speaking of endless, sometimes it seems like a roll of duct tape will go on forever. Let's see how long this roll of duct tape actually is. without it getting stuck together like this. I've got an idea. Well, I guess this is how you unroll a roll of duct tape without it getting stuck together. This month, we've been talking a lot about determination. And determination is deciding that it's worth it to finish what you started. Today in our Bible story, we're gonna learn about a follower of Jesus named Stephen. He was a man of brave determination. So you guys go enjoy the story while I try to get myself out of this duct tape. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Acts, chapters six and seven. Stephen was the kind of guy you'd like to have as a friend, somebody you could count on. He could tell epic true stories. So then an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush, and he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stephen was always ready to lend a hand. Hey, let me carry that for you. Or offer a word of encouragement. I know this is tough, but you've got God's spirit to help. In fact, when people needed help, everybody thought of Stephen. See, the new church was growing quickly and there were people who needed food and special care. So Peter and the apostles came up with a plan. It wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Pick Stephen. He rescued my kitten from that tall sycamore tree. He helped my family while I was sick and couldn't work in the fields. Stephen, you're in. So Stephen and six other men were chosen to help care for the new believers. God filled Stephen with special grace and power to help him do this work. Wowzers. You can see that Jesus is with him. But not everyone was impressed. Rather than choosing to be joyful at the work God was doing through Stephen, there were some people that began to argue with him. No one does something for nothing. What's in all this goody-goody act for you? My friend, Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and love others. That's all I'm doing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen had a wise answer for every question. At last, his enemies resorted to telling lies about him. I heard Stephen speak evil things against Moses and against God. This stirred up the religious leaders. They arrested Stephen and brought him before their gathering, the Sanhedrin. I haven't done anything wrong. This fella, he speaks against the law. I heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this plague. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Jesus will change the practices that Moses gave to us. <laughs> Everyone looked straight at Stephen, even the high priest Caiaphas. He doesn't seem upset. Oh. His face, it's like, like an angel's. <clears throat> Is what these people are saying true? Stephen looked up at the angry, accusing faces surrounding him. He knew these people could do anything they wanted, even kill him. But he also knew that no matter what, God was still with him. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. 
Stephen wanted these leaders to understand that Jesus was no small town rebel. No, Jesus was the fulfillment of a plan that God had set in motion with Abraham so long ago. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Leave your country and your people, God said. Go to the land I will show you. Stephen continued the story of God's people through Jacob and Joseph and slavery in Egypt. The religious leaders listened, transfixed, as Stephen reminded them of God's work through Moses to free the Israelites and lead them to the promised land. He spoke of David and Solomon and the building of the temple. And then he took a deep breath and came to the heart of the story. You stubborn people, you won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? And now you have handed God's promised one, Jesus, over to his enemies. You have killed him. I can't get him, get him, get him, get him, get him. How dare you? Stephen, filled with God's spirit, stood his ground. As he looked up, God gave him a vision of heaven. I see heaven open. Jesus is standing at God's right hand. The religious leaders were so enraged, they shoved their hands over their ears and yelled so they couldn't hear another word. They rushed at Stephen. I'm telling you the truth. Rough hands grabbed Stephen and hauled him out onto the dusty stone road. A young man named Saul watched fascinated as the religious leaders brought Stephen outside the city walls under the scorching sun. Here, let me take care of your coats. Still filled with rage, the religious leaders left their coats with Saul. Then they began throwing stones at Stephen. And even through all this, Stephen's last words were filled with love. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Jesus had told his followers to live out his love everywhere. And through God's power, Stephen continued to share God's love to his very last breath. Hey guys, I'm just finally getting myself out of all this duct tape. How awesome of a story was that though? Stephen trusted God and he decided to stand firm on what he believed in, even though he didn't know how it was going to turn out. Whew, finally got this all off of me. Even th when things happen in our own life that we don't know how they're gonna turn out, the good news is, is that we follow a God that knows the ending of every story. God has always had a big plan, a bigger story. Abraham didn't know the end of the story when he moved his whole family to a new land. And Moses didn't know what would happen after leading the people out of Egypt. Now we know the other side of the story, how God sent Jesus to save the whole world. And Stephen was one of those people that kept choosing to follow God and to speak for him, even when he didn't know what was going to happen to him. Sometimes in life we go through things where we don't know how it's gonna end up. Even like now, right? You're taking school classes online and maybe you're not getting to see your friends and that could be kind of hard sometimes. And we feel like we might wanna give up like on our schoolwork or maybe we wanna be mean to our brother and sister or our mom because we don't know the end of the story. And when you feel like things are getting really hard, talk to God or talk to your mom or dad or a trusted adult that you know loves God that can help you. Talk to them about how you're feeling because the good news is, is that you never ever have to go through things alone. And everybody goes through things in their life that are hard. But the best news is, is that God is always with us and he wants to help us in those hard times. And our bottom line today is this. Keep going because God knows the end of the story. What should I make next with them? A bookmark. But if I could just find a little piece of duct tape. Perfect. Bookmark. Boom. Catch you guys later.